I'm John White. With me today is Lisa Mendelkern, and Lisa is a master gardener with the Doniana County Extension Office and also president of the local native plant chapter. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks, John. Uh, we have today some plants that work really good. We want to point that out, too. Got and lots then, of color here. Thanks, yeah. And uh, then maybe talk about some problems that we have, too. Okay. Mm. What do we have here? This is just a really gorgeous native shrub. It's a uh, shrubicena, that would be the common name. It's a deciduous shrub, gets about six feet high and wide eventually. It's really drought tolerant, has these small little leaves like so many desert plants have. And it just keeps blooming all summer long. I would really recommend that if you have space for it. Yeah, it's a beautiful shrub. It's kind of one of the last ones to come out in the spring mm -hmm. and thus it kind of blooms all through the summer when you really need some color when other things are kind of fading with the heat this one's coming on in color so it's yeah. really a gorgeous one yeah what else do you have for us well it's uh, autumn now late august and the uh, uh, salvias are just coming back into bloom again they looked a little bad during the summer mm -hmm. but they are picking up and well, look at these colors well, They'll look yeah. good through August and September here. Right. So they'll, they'll be good fall fall planting. Yeah. The trouble, though, is some of mine have now spittlebug, if we want to look at that. I've, I'm wondering, should I do well, something about that? Okay. The uh, spittlebug is like an aphid, and it uh, sucks juice out of the plant, but the spittle that it produces is white, frothy-looking stuff, helps to protect the insect. It's underneath there, uh, sucking juices out of the plant, and also this spittle kind of helps protect it from insecticides and other uh, insects that might try and feed on it so one way you might be able to approach it organically is to take some water high pressure water and just blow it off and you have use when you have it more than other use right, right? so yeah. you just kind of treat it as as needed all right what else do you have well here is uh, a leaf that has some powdery mildew underneath oh yeah this is uh, ash, and uh, as you can see on the underside, we got some little white spots, and uh, <coughs> this looks like mildew, but it's actually uh, an insect. It's a, uh, a little aphid that uh, is starting to work on the underside of the leaf, and as it builds, it'll gradually make the leaf curl a little bit, and uh, it's going to be feeding on it. You could treat it with uh, some type of insecticide, you know, registered for use on on ash, probably just an insecticidal soap and water would help a lot on keeping this under control. But white flies, aphids, things like that are kind of prominent on, on ash, so mm -hmm. uh, that'd be kind of what's hitting that. What else do you have? Well, many people who grow apples and, and uh, uh, pears probably know this already, but here's some calling moss. Oh, yeah. That's a. Uh, uh, Warm in the apple, the old typical <laughs> warm in the apple. But uh, this is coddling moth damage on apple. It's a moth that flies around and goes through several generations a year. The moth lays an egg and then the egg hatches and the little larvae burrows into the fruit. A lot of times this will cause premature drop of the fruit. It'll drop from the, from the tree. Uh, sometimes when the worm goes in, you'll get a bacterial infection that may follow the worm in and cause some, some damage to the uh, apple, uh, kind of a breakdown of the tissue. Uh, as far as trying to control coddling moth, it is hard to control because it has multiple generations a year. So uh, the use of a pheromone trap to find out when the moths are flying and time your insecticide sprays based on that uh, moth count is probably the best way to actually get, get control of it. Otherwise, you might be spraying when the insect's already in the apple and not doing any good. Yeah. So you do want to try a pheromone trap for, for uh, controlling coddly moth. And then there are organic as well as uh, some of your uh, chemical insecticides that can be used to, to control that. So, uh, But yes, they get on pears and uh, on apples. This one's kind of hitting out at the base. You can see where it's had some damage. It's been entered on these. So. Uh, Apples and pears are a, are a big problem on that. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Well, from apples to cactus, uh, many people will know that, but maybe oh, yeah. you want to talk about 
Okay. This back here. Uh, this insect that gets on a lot of our prickly pear is called cochineal scale. And the cochineal scale is what made the, you know, if you uh, disturb the insect, you usually get kind of a reddish substance that comes out of it. And the cochineal uh, was used by some of the natives and some of our forefathers a long time ago as a source of red dye. Uh, you can use a, a uh, um, systemic insecticide to go after it. Um, or you can dab, you know, if it's just in some small spots, a little Q-tip with some alcohol on it, you can kind of take it off that way. But uh, that is cochineal scale, and sometimes it will get pretty heavy on the prickly pears, mm -hmm. so it can yeah. be a problem. Yeah. Well, Lisa, thank you very much for bringing the samples today. You're welcome.